Hi everybody, this is a video about gastritis and reflux that's not caused by H. pylori. Uh, just before jumping into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick second to please like, share, subscribe, or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks for taking a second to do that. And um, also, as per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So uh, somebody post, or, uh, sent, uh, yeah, posted a question on uh, one of my videos. It was actually a uh, a question that was posted on Facebook. Um, people almost always just post questions on my YouTube videos, so this is fun to get a, a question posted on a Facebook video. So it says, if someone has a lot of acid reflux and gastritis that is not being caused by H. pylori and most likely being caused by Bartonella, what steps would I take to address it? So thank you for the question. Um, I mean, as far as Bartonella goes, Bartonella can cause a lot of things to happen. I, I personally haven't seen Bartonella cause gastritis or reflux per se. Um, that being said, I'm not saying it's not feasible for that to happen, but I just haven't seen that in my own practice. Uh, that, that I've been able to tell anyways that it's caused gastritis um, or reflux. Um, however, I've had many patients who have gastritis or reflux and they don't have H. pylori, so I can definitely speak to that. Um, <clears throat> in my experience, when there's um, a negative H. pylori test, and you know, bearing in mind that some folks do, uh, they don't always get the gold standard testing done for H. pylori. Um, the gold standard testing, to my understanding, is either a stool test, a, um, an, an endoscopy, so basically a scope where they do a culture uh, from the um, stomach, um, or doing a urease breath test. Um, those are all very good tests and accurate tests, to my understanding. Um, a blood test for H. pylori is really not a very good test, and the gold standard is to, if you get a positive result in a blood test, you should repeat it with with um, a more uh, better validated test. Um, so uh, assuming that a person really doesn't have H. pylori and they have reflux uh, and gastritis, um, other things that I've commonly seen be underlying culprits for those conditions are um, having a stomach acid deficiency, which kind of sounds ironic, but it is something that I've seen in a number of cases. Um, I have posted videos about stomach acid deficiency before, so feel free to search the arch archives of my videos and, and see that video if you're if you're so inclined. Um, I've also seen SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, cause um, reflux and or gastritis in a number of patients. Um, sometimes the issue is that the person um, has a stomach irritation because of things they've been taking. Maybe they're eating too much ibuprofen or some other type of pain management medication or some other type of medication to manage symptoms. And so it's causing irritation of the stomach and that's actually causing gastritis. So in those cases, you know, ideally we try to switch folks over to uh, <clears throat> medications that are not going to irritate the stomach. And then also work with um, a class of uh, herb called demulcent herbs, which are basically um, soothing herbs, like kind of internally soothing herbs, things like um, aloe vera or slippery elm or uh, marshmallow root or uh, glutamine or various things like that. Uh, oftentimes we can find great um, combination formulas that have multiple ingredients together and take those as a combination to help soothe the, the gut. Um, with gastrite or with uh, reflux itself, um, it can be temporarily or sometimes a little bit more than temporarily uh, necessary to reduce um, foods that commonly uh, cause or exacerbate reflux. So uh, cooked tomatoes, for example, um, uh, citrus fruits, um, spicy foods, um, peppermint, chocolate, um, you know, I know these are wonderful, delicious foods, but unfortunately they can exacerbate reflux for some folks. So sometimes we just temporarily need to take a bit of a break from those um, uh, foods to you know, kind of just give the stomach, give the lower esophageal sphincter a bit of a break. So um, those are kind of the top things that I think about when folks are having issues with gastritis or reflux. Um, in my experience, they, it tends to be quite treatable and generally quite efficiently treatable. I mean, there are certainly outlier cases. I have, I've had patients where they've had um, surgeries for various things like around their stomach or esophageal and you know, sometimes a little muscle that connects the base of the esophagus to the stomach um, is stretched out or damaged in some way, or there might be a neurological issue that's you know, interfering with the proper closure of that sphincter muscle. That's unfortunately much more of an uphill battle. It can be very difficult, if not impossible, to manage symptoms in those patients without using proton pump inhibitor drugs or things like that. But um, outside of those like you know, outlier cases, um, generally I find reflux and uh, gastritis tend to be quite responsive to treatment. Um, I hope that this information was helpful. If there's any any further questions on this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.